So we are quickly entering the stage of recruiting where the 2023 cycle is starting to wind down. Their last signing day is right around the corner, and with that in mind, the 2024 recruiting class is really starting to heat up. And today, we need to talk about one of the top players in the class of 2024, a top 15 player in high school football regardless of position, Ellis Robinson, the number one cornerback in the nation coming out of IMG Academy in Florida, and a five-star that every institution in the nation would love to have. Today, we need to break down his top five as he's set to commit February 1st and we need to talk about the likelihood each school has of landing him. Before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I have got to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe that the Georgia Bulldogs land Robinson as they have crystal balls inserted in their favor per 24-7 sports or do you think someone else spoils the party? Can't wait to hear from you. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below. We're on a push to 20,000 subscribers. I'd love nothing more than to have you a part of this unbelievable community. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And we are talking today about Ellis Robinson, one of the most gifted players in the entirety of the 2024 recruiting cycle. Specifically, he is the number one cornerback in the nation coming in is a top 15 player overall, coming in specifically at number 13 and the number six player in the state of Florida. He stands six foot, 175 pounds per 24 seven sports. And when you turn on the film, there is a ton to love. He is very far ahead in his technique and he sticks to wide receivers. He's got speed. He's got length. This is a prototypical college corner, the type of guy that every institution in the nation loves to try and get into their defensive back room because he just brings an edge to to his game. And Robinson has a top five of Alabama. Colorado, Georgia, LSU, and Miami, and like I said, he's set to make his commitment on February 1st. So let's go through the list. As I stated in the intro, Georgia has the crystal balls inserted in their favor, but that does not mean that it's a done deal, especially with heavyweight recruiters battling it out. And we'll start with the Alabama Crimson Tide, because nobody in the nation is surprised when they see Nick Saban and Alabama make the top five or make the top list for a five-star prospect. It just kind of seems to be the status quo, specifically a five-star defensive prospect. Look, let's be very honest here. Alabama has essentially became NFLU. They boast the most active players in the NFL, and every time you turn around, they're sending another load to the NFL in every single draft. Development there is just on another level, and they're not unique in this. There are several institutions that just seem to develop at such a high rate, but it's the consistency at which they've been able to do it since Nick Saban got there. That's what's really so impressive about the Crimson Tide, the results on the field and the development they feel. That's exactly why it's never surprising whenever we see Alabama make the running for these top prospects because they have continually showed when they get these guys, they know what to do. They put them in positions to be successful, and because of that, we have got to watch this. Furthermore, Alabama has been very successful recruiting IMG, and they just landed a five-star defensive back, Desmond Ricks, who reclassified from the class of 2024 to the class of 2023 and became instantly the number two cornerback in the nation in a five-star well, Desmond Ricks has been adamant that he's bringing guys from IMG with him. So this is a battle we have got to watch. But now we need to talk about Colorado because Coach Prime and the Buffaloes have been shaking up recruiting everywhere. Whether we're talking the transfer portal or whether we're talking the traditional recruiting ranks, they have been getting in a ton of talent. And once again, Coach Prime lands the number one defensive back in a recruiting class. And the question here is, could he make it a three-peat? And if he did, he would have Travis Hunter, Kermani McLean, and Elliott. Robinson. Now, this is something that the likes of the Georgia Bulldogs and every other team on this list are going to be trying to make sure doesn't happen because that Colorado secondary is getting loaded and I personally cannot wait to watch it. As far as why Colorado is in this running, this is where it gets interesting because I don't want to repeat myself too much. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I have a question for all of you. Why is Colorado here? And the answer to that question is quite simple. It's Coach Prime. And the reason the answer is Coach Prime is two parts. First and foremost, it's Coach Prime. You've seen what he's done, both as an MLB player, as an NFL player, and in his young tenure as a coach. He has known success through and through. Hall of Famer, you name it, he holds the accolades. That's intriguing to these young guys, specifically a cornerback who now looks at Coach Prime and sees someone who can tutor them. At the very position, they look to transition from high school football to college football to the NFL. So it is not surprising at all whenever these guys want to go play for prime. But the second reason is hope. 
belief, and excitement. Those are the things right now that are making Colorado a destination that these guys want to go visit. It's a reason why every weekend that goes by, it seems like more and more names are trying to figure out when they can make it out to visit the Buffalo. Something we're going to have to keep up with, but know this. The recruiting hype right now for Colorado is real. And I know a lot of people are going to point to the fact of, oh, well, we haven't seen them coach a game. And you're not wrong, but right now it's the offseason. The name of the game for Coach Prime is talent acquisition, and they are knocking it out of the park. But there is a team that's going to have something to say about that. The team that already has crystal balls inserted in their favor, the Georgia Bulldogs. And Georgia, coming off of back-to-back national championships, are going to catch the attention of pretty much, well, any recruit they are interested in, and deservedly so. And just like we talked about for Alabama, this is another institution that develops at such a high rate. And guess what? This is going to be another draft where they send a load to the NFL. These high school guys recognize stuff like this. And in the era of NIL, I have held consistent one thing. The NIL is fantastic, but development will remain king. Because as much money as you can make through NIL, NFL money is the real big boy money. That's where the money is really at. And why is that? Because you don't relinquish name, image, and likeness rights once you get to the NFL. If anything, your opportunities expand. So you can still capitalize off of name, image, and likeness, and then be on an NFL contract, double dipping your money. This is why I say development is king. The NIL era is great, but development will remain at the forefront, and you're going to see prospects choose development over NIL as more time goes. Or at least that's my theory. Very interested in hearing from all of you on that. But one thing we have to understand, it's Georgia. Kirby Smart is architecting a defense that is stingy, and we see it right before our very eyes. We look at the guys they send to the NFL. We look at the results they see. It's not surprising when they get five-star talent. It's not surprising when blue-chip players want to go play there because the results are speaking for themselves. We need to stay in the SEC and talk about LSU, a team that growing up, so many of us heard them and the moniker DBU in the same sentence. And we remember the insane run of defensive backs they had. And now we fast forward to present day. Corey Raymond is no longer there as he is with Florida. Dave Aranda is no longer there as he's the head coach of Baylor. And still... You have Ellis Robinson, including LSU, in their top list. That's the power of LSU. It's a brand that is going to be powerful in recruiting. They're going to be able to get talent. And they're coming off of a really interesting season. Because if you took away the A&M game, LSU fans everywhere would be elated by how the season went. And deservedly so. There was a lot of question marks for the Tigers heading into this season, and they answered a lot of them. So I'm super interested to see what the future holds. But it is great to see, and great for LSU fans, that even after you lose a Dave Aranda, Even after you lose a Corey Raymond, you're still landing smack dab in the middle for these five-star cornerback battles. And in fact, you and Bama just went head-to-head for Desmond Ricks. Unfortunately, you didn't come out on the winning end of that, but it proves my point that LSU as a brand is going to be tough to beat even without those heavyweight recruiters. And that says something. And finally, the last name on this list, geez, tongue-tied, the Miami Hurricanes. And Miami is really intriguing because they want nothing more than to answer losing a five-star defensive back by gaining a five-star defensive back. As Kermani McLean flipped his commitment from Miami to Colorado in the waning moments and is set to sign once signing day arrives. Miami needs something. Now, this is a team that's recruited very well. Let's get one thing understood. They may have missed out on Kermani McLean, but if you look at that recruiting class top to bottom, it is very impressive. Mario Cristobal, there is no questioning his abilities as a recruiter, but now we need to see it all come together during the season. And one thing we need to understand, every coach in the nation deserves time. And Mario Cristobal deserves time at Miami to get the program running in the way that he thinks is going to be conducive to success. So we cannot judge too harshly off of one season, but that being said, it was not the season anybody expected nor wanted, and most of all, Mario Cristobal. But getting in talent such as Robinson would be huge, and you already have him in the state of Florida. He goes to IMG, which means you have so much access to be able to try and keep him at the state he's currently playing in. Whether or not Miami will be able to do that remains to be seen, as there are heavyweight recruiters in this battle. But luckily, for the Miami Hurricanes, the guy you have on the trail is someone who's been a force in recruiting, and that's Jamel Adai. Coming from Georgia to Miami, he is a name that has been very successful. Georgia fans will know this name. He got in multiple five stars for the Georgia Bulldogs, and the question is, can that carry over to Miami? And I have no doubt that this guy is an elite recruiter, but one thing we need to say and be very candid about, and this isn't a shot at Miami, 
it's easier to recruit to Georgia when they're competing for national championships than it is to Miami when they're trying to figure out how to get to a conference championship. And that's not a shot at Miami. I've been very forthright that I think Miami is going to get it together under Mario Cristobal and be a fun team in the ACC, or at least I hope so. I very much well hope so. So don't get it confused, Miami fans. I, I want the Hurricanes to be good because I think college football is better. So hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. The Georgia Bulldogs have the crystal balls inserted in their favor, and that's a tough team to be able to leapfrog. But we have got some heavyweight recruiters in this list, which makes this battle so much fun. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. That's it. See you.